Hello and welcome to this tutorial on the Cisco History Buffer. When you're at a router or switch command line, you're going to be typing a lot of commands usually. And some of these commands you'll want to type over and over and you'll want to do it as fast as you can. So if it's a long command or you're just getting tired, it's a real pain to type it out each time. And so this is where the History Buffer comes into play. The History Buffer is a place where your recent commands are stored and you have access to this history buffer, the entire thing, or you can scroll through it to find a command you want to issue again. And when you find it, you just hit enter and you can reissue it rather quickly. So it's a very convenient tool. So we're going to talk a little bit more about the show history command and what we can use it for. And then we're going to look at some of the different options for the history buffer. You can change it on a switch or router wide basis for everybody or you can change it just for your particular session. Maybe you want to extend the range of the history buffer or you want to make it smaller. You have no use for it. So we're going to look into all those things and let's get started. So let's telnet into a router and take a look at some of our options when it comes to the history buffer. Okay, so the first command we want to look at is show history. And so far, it shows two commands I entered. The first one enabled, it's abbreviated because I abbreviated it when I typed it, was the first command I used to get into privilege mode. And the second command was show history. So it shows me my history, the overall history. So if I add a few more commands on here, show run, show process, maybe show another run, about show interface, okay. So now, I just wanted to get more commands in there. If I take a look at the at my history now, you can see I have more commands in there. So we have a tutorial where we talked about editing and recall commands of the iOS. And we talked about scrolling through uh, with the up arrow and the down arrow. What we were actually scrolling through was the history buffer. So you can see here, if I hit the up arrow or control P, stands for previous, I can scroll through. So if I want to access any of these commands quickly, I can just up arrow or control P. I think most people up arrow is just easier to access on the keyboard. But if I've gone too far back in the history, let's say I need to get to that show proxy again, I hit the down arrow or control N for next, and I can get my more recent commands. See, I can go up and I can go back down. So why is this useful? Well, let's say I want to see if a, I want to keep checking up on a particular interface. I can just keep hitting the up arrow and you see I can keep accessing the interface command. I don't have to type it each time. Well, what is the size of the history buffer? Let's take a look. The command we want to use is called show terminal. And there's a lot of information in here, but what we're interested in is this line here. History is enabled. History size is 10. So your default history buffer size is 10 commands. And that's true on Cisco routers and switches. Well, let's say we want to make it bigger for everybody who accesses the router or the switch. So we have to get into configuration mode to do that. This is done on the line portions of the configuration. So if you want to do it for just the console users, you go into line console. Or if you want to do it for your SSH or Telnet users, you'd go into your VTY line. And the command is history, size, and if I question that for the parameter, you can see we can go pretty high, up to 256. Let's keep it simple and just double it from the default 10, we'll go to 20. And now you can see in the configuration, under the VTY section, I have history size 20. We could also have done the show terminal command again. And here you see history is still enabled and the history size is 20. So that's how we would do it for everybody who's accessing the VTY and or the console. But let's say I don't want to make configura configuration changes, but I just want to make changes for my particular session. So you can do that as well without entering configuration mode. However, you have to be in privilege mode. So if you have access to privilege mode, what you would type is, Terminal, history size, and if you question mark it, you can still see we have quite a, a broad range of options. 
let's say I want to make it 30. And if I enter the show terminal command, we can now see my history size is 30. But if we check out the running configuration, we can still see that everyone else is going to get by default 20. So we didn't change the configuration. We just changed my particular session. When I log out and I log back in, I will go back to whatever default is configured. To summarize what we went over, we have the show history command to view the entire history buffer. We also have the show terminal command, which gives us information on the default size or the currently configured size of our history buffer. We also talked about scrolling through the buffer using the arrow keys or the control P and control N combinations. Also, we talked about changing the configuration for either the VTY or the console users, and that is the history size X, where X is the number of history commands. And then we also talked about just changing one particular session, not changing the configuration. And that command, which is done from not configuration mode, but from privilege mode, is terminal history size, and the X stands for the number of commands to fit in the history buffer. And that's it. That's everything you need to know about the Cisco history buffer. Thanks for watching.